Hi, I'm Steve Smith. And I'm Mike Jones. We're the owners of Smith & Jones Cable, and we'd like to welcome you to this behind-the-scenes look at our company. Most people only see parts of their cable company, and they only get to know certain people. Uh, the customer service representative who takes your phone calls, the installer who sets up your cable, the thug who crushes your spleen when you're behind on your payments. But today we're going to take you to Smith & Jones headquarters where you'll see how we operate and maybe come to understand your cable company just a little bit better. You'll meet the staff, tour the facility, and get to know the driving force behind Smith & Jones Cable. Me, Steve Smith. And Jones. Jones will be there too. Yes, you'll get to see the master control room, find out how we acquire new programming, and you may even see one or two of Smith's bastard children running around the place. Yes, you'll meet our friendly sales staff, our highly trained service technicians, and you might even get a chance to see Jones's collection of crack pipes and rash ointments. <coughs> you see the transmitter, the satellite dish array, the underage girls that Smith keeps in his office. Meet the head engineer, who keeps everything running smoothly, including Jones's house arrest ankle monitor. You'll meet the bookkeeper, who keeps accounts in balance and works extra hard to hide Smith's financial improprieties. Right. Meet Jones's mother. Smith and Jones Cable traces its roots back to 1902, when old friends Elijah Smith and Reginald Jones founded the Smith & Jones Telegraph Company in the growing community of Portland, Oregon. At that time, the telegraph system was used almost exclusively for information exchange and the transmission of mundane personal messages. But Smith & Jones visualized an even greater level of interpersonal wire communication with unlimited profit potential. It is in this spirit that they introduced the first telegraph sex line. Dear Philip, have removed petticoat. Stop. Knickers hot with passion. Stop. What are you wearing? Stop. Love, Margaret. Not everyone embraced the new idea. In August of 1904, Viola Grayson, the president of both the Women's Morality League and the Ladies' Auxiliary Cannon Corps, fired a 90mm shell into the Smith & Jones offices, destroying most of the telegraph receivers and several dozen pornographic Nickelodeons. It was a major setback, but with valiant effort, Smith & Jones were able to reopen their operation the following year. They immediately ran afoul of the law, however, when they sold an unscrambled, obscene telegram to a miner. This caught the attention of President Theodore Roosevelt, who personally closed them down under the Decency and Wire Communications Act of 1905. The company was dismantled and Smith and Jones were forced to live out their remaining years in a home for the criminally insane. Eighty years later, their great-grandsons, Stephen Smith and Michael Jones, met while attending the John DeLorean Entrepreneurial High School for Troubled Boys. The two became fast friends and immediately embarked on lives of crime. After five years of brutality, extortion, thievery, and televangelism, the law finally caught up with them and they were sentenced to a hard time at the Flamingo Bay State Penitentiary. <coughs> While most convicts would see a nine to fifteen year prison sentence as a waste of their lives, Smith and Jones preferred to look at it as an apprenticeship. Upon receiving their paroles, they decided to combine the traditions of their forefathers with the lessons learned from a lifetime of crime. And Smith and Jones Cable was born. <laughs>